Here we go with chapter four, reactions in aqueous solutions. Make sure that you have a notebook, pencil, periodic table, and calculator out in front of you. So then you can follow along and take these notes. So just an overview of what we're going to learn in chapter four. First of all, chapter four is probably the toughest one uh, in all of the first semester, and it includes six challenging topic areas. The first one is just general properties of aqueous solutions. They put a little AQ down below something that is aqueous, therefore meaning it's dissolved in water. Section 4.2 are things called precipitation reactions, also known as solid forming reactions. Section 4.3 is an acid-base reaction area. Section 4.4 is an area where we study oxidation reduction reactions, aka redox reactions. Each one of these is its own individual video cast. Section 4.5 puts some mathematics to all these things, and we look at concentration of different aqueous solutions. Concentration is measured in something called molarity, and we'll learn how to calculate that, and we'll learn how to dilute solutions as well. And then in section 4.6, we put it all on steroids, and we go back to chapter 3, and we do stoichiometry with all of these items. So let's dive right in and let's do uh, some general properties of these aqueous solutions. And let's take a look at some background knowledge that you might or might not know about these things that are dissolved in water. First of all, when you dissolve something in water, it's called aqueous. It's symbolized by a small parenthesis AQ down below the actual formula that's dissolved. Many times you'll see it written as a symbol if it is an ion, meaning that it's gained or lost your electrons, it'll have a little plus or minus, and then it'll have AQ down below. Sometimes you'll see it as the whole formula with a little AQ down below it, meaning that this is dissolved in water or aqueous. Be careful because if you see an L, that means it's a pure liquid. I mean, it might be water itself, which of course is dissolved in itself, but it's a liquid, not something that is dissolved or surrounded by water molecules. Dissolved is also known as soluble, and things that don't dissolve are known as insoluble. Reactions that form insoluble substances are called precipitation reactions. And this is a future video cast for you. A precipitate or a precipitation reaction is a solid forming reaction, one that makes something that does not dissolve or is not aqueous in solution. So how does this dissolving in water takes place? Well, to dissolve in water, you need to know just a little bit of background knowledge about water itself. First of all, water is a unique compound in that it is rich in electrons around the oxygen atom and therefore has a partial negative charge uh, around the oxygen atom. And then the hydrogen atoms have lost electrons or have, have, have had those electrons pulled close to the oxygen and therefore they lack electrons. And these three dots means therefore they're positive. And there's some more of a positive area to a water molecule here and more a negative area to a water molecule here. This allows water molecules to surround ion. Remember, ions are things that have gained or lost electrons and therefore have a positive or negative charge. This allows water to surround ion particles to make them aqueous or to make them dissolved. This process is called solvation. Solvation or a solvated compound. In your textbook, whichever one you happen to be using, they have a picture of several solvated compounds. I'll zoom in on these and we'll do a little bit of explaining. You'll notice that this is a series of sodiums and chlorines. Sodiums are the purplish little spheres. 
chlorines are the green little spheres. And you'll notice that the positive part of the water molecules, the little white parts that represents the hydrogens, surround the chlorines. And you'll notice that the red parts, the negative parts, surround the positively charged sodium ions when they're solvated or pulled apart in solution. Another example is something called methanol, a molecular substance, something that is uh, made of only nonmetals, and it dissolves in water as well, and it is attracted because it has a positive negative charge to its molecule, just like water does as well. We'll learn much more about these dissolving processes in chapter 11. But for right now, you can just know that water has that special ability to surround many molecules and dissolve it or perform solvation. Let's zoom back out here. We can get back on these notes. Some of these substances that dissolve form ions. Ions are things that have a positive or a negative charge because they've gained or lost electrons. These ions conduct electricity. These ions conduct electricity because electricity is nothing more than positive or negative charges bouncing off of one another and being pushed through whatever medium they happen to exist in. If it's copper, it's just electrons being pushed. If it's in an aqueous solution, it's the positive or negative ions, the things that are lacking or have gained electrons that bounce off of one another. These ions in solution that conduct electricity are called electrolytes, just like electrolytes in your Gatorade. Gatorade contains positive and negatively charged things. They happen to be potassium ions, calcium ions, sodium ions, which are used, of course, by your body. In the next video, we'll look at three different kinds of electrolytes, these things that conduct electricity or only sort of conduct electricity or don't conduct electricity. We classify them as strong electrolytes if they conduct a lot of electricity, weak electrolytes if they don't conduct electricity very much or don't have a lot of positive and negatives, and non-electrolytes if they don't conduct electricity at all. We'll see you in the next video, Cass.